farmer Margaret Ann Dodd, and she'll tell you that the view from her office, the cab of a combine, is one of the best parts of the job. Constantly changing as she moves through the field and the seasons, but at the same time, a constant reminder of her family's long history here at Springfield Farms in Queen Anne's County. The farm that we're on right now was my husband Sonny's grandfather's. This is my domain when I'm out here. Nobody asked me to do anything because they know my mom's busy running the combines. Today, she's harvesting corn. The yield is phenomenal, way better than we had anticipated, and better. Actually, I would say that this year is our top yield since we've been combined. An impressive superlative, and one that Margaret Ann can speak to better than most. After all, she's been tracing the contours of these fields with the family combine for decades. Sonny and I have been married for going on 58 years in November. We have worked side by side together for all these years. And he came in one day, says, I've got to run to the mill. I need you to run the combine. No way. I'm not doing that. I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. Went out and showed me, ran a couple rounds with me, and it's kind of been my job ever since. <laughs> When I started driving the combine, it was very rare to see women in that capacity. Or in farming at all, if you believe the data. The U.S. Census of Agriculture, a complete survey of the nation's farms collected every five years, shows only 5% of farms were operated by women in 1978. But according to the agency behind the census, the National Agricultural Statistics Service, or NAS, that 5% doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. People who know farming know there's multiple people involved on most family farms. You know, husbands and wives, but there may be sons and daughters, and grandpa and grandma are still weighing in on decisions for the family farm. Despite that, until 1997, the Ag Census only allowed one operator to be listed per farm, which typically was the patriarch. The result? Relatively few women show up in the census data before then. But that doesn't mean women weren't farming. How many dozen chicken eggs were produced last year? I don't know. My wife takes care of the chickens. This is a replica of the tractor that I first learned how to drive. I was probably 20. Roughest riding tractor I think you'll ever find. Showed her where the clutch was and where the steel wheel was. And and no power steering. And no power steering, so <laughs> I put her on her own. Since then, I've done pretty much every aspect of farming there is. If something needs to be done, you hop in and you do it. A sentiment shared by farmers everywhere. In recent years, NAS has worked towards better representing the all-hands-on-deck reality of American agriculture. And, of course, the women, like Margaret Ann, who have played important roles on the nation's family farms for generations. After the 2012 census, we received feedback from a number of stakeholders that asked us, can you look and see how you collect data on women on farms? We think you might need to change how you collect the data to better represent the wide variety of people who make decisions. In 2017, we collected data on four persons per farm. We also decided to frame that question a little more broadly. When we did that, we found a lot more women farming than we had previously published in the 2012 census. In Maryland, we saw a 33% increase in the number of female producers on farms. Back in the cornfield, Margaret Ann is wrapping up another day's work on the farm that she's helped keep up and running for nearly 60 years. You must face it, if it wasn't for her being able to do what she does, I couldn't do it. She's what holds this family together. No, no, I mean, that's the truth. She's the glue. <laughs>